Welcome back. Affirm shares are one of the top trending tickers on the Yahoo Finance platform after better than expected earnings last night. Wow, that is uh, really some type of gain here, almost up 40 percent here in the pre-market. Uh, and guys, really, I think this Affirm's quarter hit a couple keynotes, at least from my perspective. One, you had CEO Max uh, Levchin call out profitability by the middle of 2023. That was very good to hear. Not new news per se. They have put out that bogey before. But again, just to hear him say this uh, in this type of nervous market, I think was very good. Number two, noted on the call, they're not likely to go out there and raise new capital. I think that quieted a lot of concerns out there on the street regarding whether they may need to raise capital in an economic growth slowdown. And last but not least, just a little nugget, not necessarily related uh, to a firm. They know the Peloton business down 40 percent quarter over quarter, which was uh, Interesting to see, but perhaps unsurprising, given that disastrous quarter from that company. Yeah, a significant partnership that they do have with Peloton. And you think about some of the other multi-year agreements that they do have. Exclusive partnerships with Shopify, that's going out to June of 2025. Uh, and they're going to be looking to add on some of those shop pay installments uh, with the Affirm Adaptive Checkout this summer as well. And then additionally, on the active consumers, that grew 137 percent year over year. And so perhaps investors really latching onto that. Analysts actually calling that out as well. Um, Credit Suisse, I believe, also was really confident in some of the plans that they have to achieve adjusted operating profitability by the end of fiscal year 2023. Yeah, I mean, coming into this report, there were so many jitters in the market, particularly because of Upstart Holdings, which is another company, sort of fintech company, that came out with a really negative outlook that seemed to be tied to the broader economic backdrop. So if it's the broader economic backdrop, then you would think that a lot of other buy now, pay later and or fintechs would be affected by this. So I think this report was really reassuring on that front. And then I think the funding announcement that you were talking about, Saz, uh, most of the analysts this morning mentioning that in their reactions to this, that that was also quite reassuring to investors. In addition to everything else, the company pointing out uh, on May 4th, it completed a $500 million asset-backed securitization. So just another type of funding um, that it sold for the company. So it won't need to get more potentially. Yeah, what's unclear to me, and we're going to speak to a, a firm CFO, Michael Linford, uh, very soon, but what's unclear to me, what does this business do during a recession? And not just a firm, but mm -hmm. other type of buy now, pay later firms. Do they see an uptick in their business because people don't have that money to go out there and they don't have the cash to go out and buy something? Do they put it on a buy now, pay later? Or do they stop buying entirely? You know, this is one of those new, newer businesses that hasn't, I think, truly been through that nasty recession. There was that 2020 recession, of course, right. for the pandemic, but still not that nasty bruising one. Right. The financial crisis, I mean, this company was founded after in 2012. And so missing that one, but still the data that they could perhaps lean back to during the COVID recession in the early days of it, the difference there, I, I suppose, is that consumers had more money in stimulus payments that they were right. getting pushed out to them. And so we did see a rise in 2021 of those buy now pay laters that 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 shot up. But it's really coming back to, again, how many consumers during times of a financial crunch at the household level would lean more into stretching out those payments over time? I mean, the other difference between 2020 and now is this is an entirely different company in terms of size. Yeah. It is much, much bigger now. It has signed up many, many more merchants now than it was before. So, you know, it, it, does that make it more resistant? Maybe. I mean, the other question I have when it comes to the broader economic backdrop, as you say, or in terms of people's spending patterns is also, what does the default rate look like? Mm -hmm. You know, are, are there more people who are going to default on their payments if there's a recession? Yeah. You know, uh, the buy now, pay later industry, the default rate has been surprisingly low. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, it was good to hear them even at least call out profitability. And I, we just, uh, I just talked to Max Levchin a couple weeks ago, and it was good to hear him just say, hey, I'm not running this as a nonprofit. I want to make money. So it's good to hear he see him essentially double down on that call. Um, FYI, um, you already mentioned it, but uh, Michael Linford, we're going to be speaking to him in just a, a little bit in about an hour's time. He's the CFO at the company. So we will talk more with him.